So our next step in setting up our Active Directory domain is to join the computers to the Active Directory domain. I have Bob's PC and Jane's PC, which we need to join. And one thing you should note before doing this is if you are already have a computer with stuff on it, so for example, on this one, Bob's computer has a couple of shortcuts on the desktop or if it has any documents, etc. When you join the domain, when you log on, you're no longer logging on as the local user. You'll be logging on as an entirely brand new domain user. So you'll need to manually copy over some files or search the internet on how to migrate that profile from being a local profile, non-domain joined, into being a domain profile. If you're starting off with an entirely fresh network, you've got nothing to worry about because nobody's got any user data anyway that needs to be moved over. So the easiest way to do this is to go start and then run. So in Windows 10, right click on the start menu, click on run, type in system properties advanced, all one word. Go to the computer name tab and then you can use the network ID wizard but I find that generally is not that easy to use. It's actually easier just to click on the change button and then where it says member of, change it to domain. And if I remember correctly, we called it Bob's widgets.internal. And we now need to fill in the domain administrator username and password. And that's it. As easy as that, the computer is now joined to the Active Directory domain. So if I restart this computer, right, so we're now joined to the domain, but because we previously logged on as a local user, it's still offering us to log in as Bob. If I just press enter, it will log in and we'll be back to how it was before we joined the domain. But if we try to access any domain wide resources, so any file shares or anything that requires a logon or authentication against the server, it won't work. But if you needed to access information which was stored under the previous profile, you still can do. I will need to show you how you swap onto that user if you've signed on as somebody else. So to log on as the domain administrator and I'm going to have to use the on-screen keyboard here because I've got a cross between UK and US keyboard layouts so you wouldn't need to do this but for me typing I will have to do this there we go, I can get my backslash key now so if I just type in administrator you can see at the bottom here it changes to signing into Bob's office PC rather than the Bob's widgets domain. I'm not sure why Microsoft does that, but we need to put in the domain that this will sign into. So the easiest way to do that is Bob's widgets and then a backslash. So Bob's widgets backslash administrator. So that's the domain we want to sign into and the username we want to use. And there we go, signed in as the administrator on the domain. So if I sign out, and now I want to sign back in as Bob on his old original local profile, that's not going to work. Because if I do Bob, sign into, it's trying to sign into the domain. And on the domain, we've not yet created any user accounts. The only account that exists is the administrator one. So if I do Bob and then no password, it's just not going to work. So what we'll do next is create some user accounts and sign in as those. But if you wanted to get back to Bob's local or old logon, if he had a previously used computer before you joined it to the domain, you'd need to do the computer name and then backslash and Bob. If you don't know the computer name, 
like when we typed in administrator earlier and it shows you the computer name that's a very easy quick way to get the local computer name so administrator his computer name is bobs-office-pc so I'm going to do bobs-office-pc a backslash and then the username bob and then he had no password so I'm just going to press enter And there we go, we're back to his computer as if it had never joined the domain, except for to log on, we need to use his local computer name and then a backslash and then his username. However, we don't generally want to use Bob's local account anymore because we've got a domain for a reason. So that's Bob's computer is now joined to the domain. I will also go and change Jane's computer and join that to the domain as well. You may recall in the last episode, under the domain controller, I said that once you'd added computers to the domain, as long as you had DHCP on the server, it should be adding the computer names to DNS. So I'm hoping now if I go into the DNS control panel on the server and Bob's widgets, we have Jane's Office PC and Bob's Office PC has been added to Bob's widgets dot internal, which is how if you use stuff like Sophos um, or some other bits of software, that's how Sophos would connect to Bob's PC and Jane's PC to do central management. So having those computer names to the IP addresses that they're using in your DNS zone for your Active Directory name is really useful. Go back to Jane's PC and just make sure that I can log on as a domain user. Once again, if I just do straight administrator, it tries to use Jane's Office PC as the domain. So I'm going to have to do Bob's widgets backslash administrator. So at this stage we've joined the computers to the domain. What we now want to do is create some users so that the users on those computers can log in and use their computer. And also in the future, in the next videos, access file shares and other things. So let's go over to the domain controller. And in control panel, administrative tools, we want to go to Active Directory users and computers. And unless you've got a small business server from Microsoft, you won't have any what's called organizational units set up. So the computers we've joined will just be in the computers section. And if you've manually added users, they might be in the users section. But what we want to do is start a structure for organizing our network. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click and go new and organizational unit and I'm going to call it the company name so Bob's widgets within Bob's widgets we then probably want an organizational unit for computers and an organizational unit for users so on Bob's widgets right click new organizational unit company computers and then a new organizational unit computer users within computer users we might also then have split levels of users so we could have office admins warehouse workers uh, temporary workers and other such things so I'm going to do new organizational unit office administrators and another one, new organizational unit, warehouse workers.
And again, under company computers, we may also want to do the same. So organizational unit, warehouse computers, and another organizational unit of office computers. At the moment, nothing's in those. We'll deal with that in a minute. So I'm going to call Bob and Jane as office administrators. So in that section, I'm going to right click, new user. I'm going to call his username b.smith for Bob Smith. Password. I'm not going to make him change his password and I won't leave those ticked. If you're a really lazy administrator or you've got a policy reason for not wanting passwords to expire, you probably want to tick on the passwords never expire. In my setups, I do have them expiring but on a very long expiry time, such as half a year or a year. And that has created Bob Smith as a user. And we'll also create one for Jane as well. So user Jane, this is where I'm going to forget the surname that I pick, but let's do Jane Doe. And the username will be j.doe. So we now have two users. I'm also going to create a warehouse user as well. Call him Robert. So we've now got three users added to our domain. Robert West, Bob Smith and Jane Doe. If I minimise the server, let's go over to Bob's computer. And this time we can now log in as a domain user. So ignoring Bob's old original local profile. Let's go other user. And it was B Smith. And it's picked up his full name from the Active Directory. And we're logged in. While it's logging in, we'll go over to Jane's one as well. Log out of her local account, or possibly I'm in under administrator. Can't remember which one I'm in at the moment. And she was j.doe. And that's really it for a very, very basic NT domain or Active Directory domain. We've now got computers that you can log into if you create an account on the server. You could disable the account and it would prevent them logging into the computers or reset their passwords and they wouldn't be able to know how to log on. So that's already quite a massive step that's just been taken. And also, while I'm on Bob's computer, I will demonstrate that with the third user that we've created, the warehouse worker, Robert West. We could also log in as him. So if I go switch user, There we go, logged in as Robert West. What's not too important at the moment, but we will come across when I get further in this series, is moving these computers into the organisational units for the area that those computers are in, because we can then apply policy or software installation or shortcuts on the desktop or other settings to the computer, depending whether they're in the warehouse or whether they're the office computer.
we will come across that in the future. So I'm going to log back in as Bob Smith and just quickly go through some of the problems or common problems you might come across when trying to join a computer to a domain. So if we go back to System Properties Advanced, and because Bob is not an administrator, or at least not an administrator user on the Active Directory, it now asks you to fill in user account control to elevate to get access to any of the administrator type settings on the computer. So if you got stuck at this stage to do with joining a computer to the domain and you've got error messages about not being able to find the domain name um, or possibly other things, the most common problem here is that the DNS server is not set to your Active Directory domain server. So if you do your ipconfig slash all and you notice that your DNS server is not your Active Directory server and it's, for example, is set to your router or isn't set to anything at all, that will cause a problem for your computer trying to look up that NT domain or Active Directory domain to then join it. I think that's about it for this video. If you do have any problems such as trying to join a computer to a domain, leave a comment and I might be able to help, but hopefully if you followed my previous videos up to here and have changed the settings that you need to change such as DHCP and DNS over to the correct places, you should be good to go. If this video has been useful to you, it would be really, really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the new video notifications turned on, but just being a subscriber would be really helpful.